how to clean and sanitize your fermentation equipment has been a long discussed topic in brewing circles. With this video, I wish to throw some light on this much debated topic. Before we get into the practical aspect of cleaning and sanitizing our fermenter, I would like to get your terminology correct. And that is the difference between a clean surface, a sanitized surface, a disinfected surface and a sterilized surface. I stress on this because many a times I see people interchange the words and mix them up as if all these are the same. No, they are not the same. If you are a home brewer, it's imperative that you get this terminology correct once and for all. For starters, cleaning and sanitization are the only words you need in brewing beer. The words disinfecting and sterilization leave it to the medical professionals. A bit of theory before we get into the practical aspects of cleaning and sanitizing our fermenter. What is a clean surface? According to the Food Standards Code, effective cleaning is the removal of general dirt, grease and food waste from a surface. Even after removal of this dirt from our fermenter, an apparently clean surface will still contain a lot of microorganisms. These days, several cleaning products are available to the home brewer. Many still use dishwashing in detergents. I personally would not recommend using dishwashing detergents for cleaning fermenters and airlocks. It's basically a decreaser, so it does not remove protein deposits and mineral scales like beer stone. Again, it contains any fragrance, it will leave a film of oil which will ruin head retention and affect the flavor of your beer. The primary aim of cleaning as a first step is to remove any organic debris and residue from your fermenter surface. If you leave behind any of the deposits in your fermenter, Bacteria can colonize this debris even though you use your sanitizer later. Because whatever company of sanitizer you use, it may not be able to penetrate deep into the debris you have left behind. The effectiveness of your sanitizer is markedly reduced if you leave behind debris. Oxyclean is sodium per carbonate. They are a relatively new group of cleaning agents that have become available to home brewers. They can effectively remove dirt and deposits from all type of brewing equipments. They work well with active oxygen to remove the grime. They are environmentally and septic system friendly. Chlorine or laundry bleach is sodium hypochlorite. Bleach is a good cleaner for glass but of limited usage for plastic since it can be absorbed by the plastic leading to off flavors in your beer and should never be used for stainless steel or brass or copper since it can actually eat holes through them if given a long enough time to contact. For cleaning glass, use at a rate of about 2.5 tablespoons per 5 gallon of water. Let the solution soak for about 30 minutes, then scrub and remove stubborn deposits. You must rinse heavily to remove excess chlorine smell. Chlorine is not effective on beer stone, so I would suggest avoid using it. PBW of powdered brewery wash is a percarbonate that is the highest strength of the percarbonates listed and is quite popular with breweries and also many home brewers. It works well to clean airlocks, fermenters, all plastic and all metals with a 30 minute soak. Works well in hot, warm and cool water but it's a little bit expensive. Of all the above, I find that OxyClean works best for me. It doesn't stain my plastic, it doesn't affect the beer's head retention if by mistake I leave some behind. It has no fragrance to it and it's not expensive. For those of you who find it expensive, then I have done the math for you. Even if you use a 2 tablespoon for 3 liters of water to clean your fermenter, it comes to around 30 to 40 rupees for half a dollar per cleaning session, which I think is reasonable for the quality that you are getting. Let's look at sanitization. Sanitizing, on the other hand, is treating a previously clean surface with a chemical agent to destroy organisms that cause disease or spoilage. Use of a sanitizer reduces the microbial population to a safe level, but a minimum amount of microbes will still be present. This is what happens when you use your sanitizer like Starsan or Amphosan or whatever in brewing. Here you can see me adding sanitizer to my fermenter. Be aware that here by sanitization, you're not killing all the microbes. Even after using your sanitizer, some of them will be left behind, but in minimal amounts, which is not enough to spoil your beer. Now let's look at the difference between sanitization and disinfection. Sanitization is a word commonly used in the food industry, whereas disinfection is commonly used in the medical industry. We use a more gentler and milder chemicals for sanitization, 
whereas very strong chemicals are used in medical industry for disinfecting some instruments. Sanitization only reduces the number of bacteria, but disinfection kills 100% of the bacteria. Again, sanitization does not kill virus and fungus, but disinfection kills most of the virus and fungus. Another set of words used strongly in the brewing community is boiling and sterilization. Boiling doesn't mean sterilization. Boiling is more accurately characterized as pasteurization. It kills those organisms that can cause harm to humans, but some types of bacteria and spores will still survive boiling. Cooking food is also a form of pasteurization. When you boil water for making a yeast starter or for hydrating yeast, many are confused of whether to boil water for 1 minute or 3 minutes. I have a definite answer for you. For brewers living in the sea level, boiling water for 1 minute is more than enough for pasteurization. But for people living in higher altitude, say more than 6500 feet, you should definitely boil for at least 3 minutes. Let's look at what is sterilization. The only way to kill all microbes is to do sterilization, which is unnecessary in brewing, but is mandatory in surgical practice. This is myself in the operating room. Here all the instruments and the gowns are sterilized to avoid infection. To sterilize these, we commonly use steam under high pressure or dry heat in large water clips. Now let's get into the practical aspect of this video. Once your fermentation is complete, you will find that the fermenter walls are full of debris and hop residue. These debris have to be removed first by cleaning. Cleaning this is easy if you do it as soon as you empty your fermenter. But if you keep it for days or weeks after emptying your fermenter, then there is a possibility that this residue that is sticking into your fermenter will harden and will be very stubborn and tough to clean off. To avoid this situation, clean your fermenters immediately after you empty them and never let them dry. Before I go into the details of how I clean my fermenter, I would like to give you an insight into what things you may need to make your job easier. A garden water spray gun is something I always use. I attach it to my kitchen tap with an adapter, which you see in red. It also has various settings to adjust the nozzle pressure, which helps to focus the spray on a spot. And also when you release the lever, the water stops by itself. So each time you want to turn it off, you don't need to close the tap. So in that way, I feel it's handy. Another accessory I use a lot during cleaning is a silicon gloves. It has a rough scrubber in the working surface so that I don't need to hold an extra scrubber during cleaning, which makes my job easier. This again is available online, it's not very expensive either. It's a food grade silicon and thus no issues there either. Do not use steel wool for scrubbing your plastic fermenters. Do not use scotch bright either as these abrasion will harbor bacteria which may not be reached by our sanitizer and so may infect our beer. Now let's get into the practical aspect of cleaning and sanitizing your fermenter. I start disassembling the fermenter by removing my airlock and placing it in a steel tray for cleaning. I will pour my cleaning solution into this tray later. After I open the fermenter cap, I just spray the inside with a couple of liters of water to dislodge some of the true and organic debris that is sticking to the side of the fermenter. The water will soften the organic hard grime in the fermenter and will make it easier for you to clean it later. I then give the fermenter a swirl and dump the trube. I dump all the trube into my kitchen sink or my garden. A garden being better as the muck may sometimes block your drainage pipes. Next I use my spray gun on the inside of the fermenter and manually try to scrub up the remaining trope with my gloves. The rough surface of the silicone gloves help me in easily dislodging the hardened trope. This is quite easy when you do it immediately after emptying the fermenter of beer. But if you wait for a few weeks or more than that then it solidifies and it, then it's a pain to remove. If you don't have a silicone gloves you can even use a sponge or a cloth for cleaning. But always avoid abrasive things like steel wool on your plastic fermenter. The spigot also is opened and allowed to drain so the particles inside the spigot is also washed away. Once you have given your fermenter a good scrub, dump the water and refill it with few liters of tap water again. The fermenter cap is also cleaned the same way. I give special attention to my filter as this is the place where some troop can be hidden leading to development of a bacterial colony and infection. 
As you can see here, just with hand cleaning itself, the fermenter looks clean. But you should be aware that there will be some spots of dried up true in the inaccessible areas of the fermenter hidden somewhere which can become a focus of infection if not removed. Before you go into the next step of sanitization, be aware that although the fermenter is visibly clean now, it still will be teeming with microbes ready to spoil your beer. Take my word for it. Once I am satisfied with my cleaning and I don't see any visible debris, I fill up the fermenter with 2 to 3 liters of water. I add a liter of very hot water into this. Hot water acts very well to dissolve dried organic matter and when mixed with my cleaning powder, which I will show now, adds to its potency. I use OxyClean. I use about 1 teaspoon of OxyClean to the 3 to 4 liters of warm water inside our fermenter. The warm water helps in better cleaning efficiency of the OxyClean. I then close the lid and give it a good shake. I drain some through the spigot also. I then use the gloves to scrub the inside once more. I pour the remaining OxyClean into my steel tray containing the airlock. I rinse the fermenter in tap water for a couple of times to wash away the OxyClean. Let's look at sanitization now that our cleaning is over. I proceed to sanitize the fermenter. I use Amphosan which is a no rinse sanitizer and is FDA approved. One teaspoon is enough for three liters of water. I close it and give it a good shake. I let it soak for about three minutes. Then I drain some through the speaker. I dump the OxyClean from the tray which contained the airlock. The sanitizer is then poured into the steel tray to sanitize the airlock. I keep the fermenter inverted for a few minutes in the tray for two reasons. One is to soak the neck of the fermenter with the sanitizer and the other is to drain as much foam as I can. Although they say not to fear the foam, I nevertheless do this. I just let it drain for a few minutes. The cap is also thrown inside the sanitizer. The airlock is taken and I leave the airlock inside my fermenter till my next brew. The cap is put back on the fermenter. It is tightly sealed and kept away for the next use. I store my fermenter this way for days. When I want to use my fermenter, I sanitize it once more and use it. Thanks for watching.